welcome to chair yoga. This is an express class. We'll get in for about 30 minutes or so. So we're going to start just seated in your chair so that you're um, as upright as possible. So that your chair tends to kind of feel a little slouchy. You could, if it feels okay, put a little pillow behind your back or you can simply just sit slightly forward so that you're able to stay more upright. And then we're gonna tune into the breath for a few moments. So you can rest your palms, maybe palms down, or you can do palms up. That, for me, this one is a little weirder, so it, <laughs> it makes my brain pay more attention, whereas this is quite calming. So if we're feeling a little sleepy, I might go for the, the upright palms. You could also put one palm inside the other and rest them in the center. So just kind of find the place that makes it feel like your shoulders are happy with you. And then we don't have to do any special breath technique. Just try to breathe a little deeper, a little smoother, and as rhythmically as possible. So if you catch yourself holding your breath, that's where you would just come back to that awareness of keeping the breath moving in a smooth rhythm. mind come right here to this moment. We're going to let go of anything that we're kind of working on for later. And we're going to let ourselves kind of arrive right here. So if there's any stuff we've been sort of ruminating on from the past, we're going to let that go. And we'll spend this next little bit just being really present with our bodies. So we're going to do a kind of chair sun salutation to start ourselves off with here. So bring the arms up and stretch up nice and tall. As you exhale, you're gonna bring your palms together, come forward so that you're folding forward as much as it feels okay to fold. Put your hands on your thighs and we're gonna come into Cobra. So we're gonna lift the heart. So we're using the back muscles, pull the shoulder blade, shoulders back, kind of broaden the collarbones. Then we'll come back to this round shape, kind of pulling the belly back, almost like a cat on Halloween. And sit up nice and tall, reach with the arms if you care to, and then we'll twist over to one side. Inhale, come back to the middle, twist the opposite direction. Inhale, back to the center. So we're gonna side bend, put an elbow on a thigh, stretch over the side, same idea, other side. And then we'll come back to the top, bring the arms back, Take a breath. <laughs> That's our little pattern. With the next breath, inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, hands to the thighs, come into cobra. Exhale, come to cat. Sit up nice and tall. Twist whichever way you did last time, the first direction. I did left first, then I'm gonna do the right. And then side bending the left side <laughs> and side bending the right. Nice big breath. Arms come down. I just kind of reach a little bit behind myself just to give my shoulders that full range of motion. Take a nice big breath. And we're going to reach up, fold forward, cobra. Stretch. Now we're going to twist in the opposite direction. So I'm going to twist to the right first. Coming back to the left second. <laughs> Coming back, side bending my right side first. Coming back, side bending the left side. And back. And then bringing the arms down. Take a breath. One more round just like that. Nice big stretch. Fold forward. Keep your back nice and long as you go. Cobra pose. Broaden the collarbones. Come into cat shape. Sit 
sitting up nice and tall, twisting. Coming back nice and tall, twisting the other direction. Nice and tall, side bending. I think I did that backwards, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> nice and tall, side bending. Oh, I clearly have a preference. <laughs> nice and tall, stretch your arms back behind and then bring them back to neutral. All right. So let's do some little rolls for the neck. Now, if it's okay, drop your chin and kind of roll your head around the shoulders. But if for any reason, that feels too pinchy or crunchy, you can instead almost kind of move your head like through a funnel shape. So it doesn't have to drop all the way to the shoulder for us to be able to get to muscle, right? So choose the amount of, uh, or the angle, maybe the amount, <laughs> the degree of angle is probably the word I should use um, for your neck. That feels best. And sometimes I find as I do this, there's little spots that are a little extra sticky. So I just slow down through those little areas. Give them a little bit of extra attention. Let's do two more little rolls from one side to the other. And then you're even. the same number of times on both sides. Let yourself float your head up to level. We're going to try to make sure the chin is nice and level, right? And then we're going to turn the head, keeping the chin level. So we're looking over one shoulder or as close as we can get, and then coming back and turning over the opposite shoulder. And just notice if there's resistance, if one side it's a little easier to turn your head around. No judgment, we're just noticing what's there. So I'm going to do one more here over the opposite shoulder and then come on back. And then we'll move the shoulders. So bring the shoulders up, around, and back. And I kind of squish the shoulder blades together, draw them down, push them forward, bring them around. Finding a good pattern of movement. I'm going to go the opposite direction. So it really feels like we're getting as big a range of motion as we can. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate on that movement and talk at the same time. <laughs> feels really good. <laughs> it's a nice oh, release for the shoulders. All right, so we're going to hunch them up and then whew, drop them down and hunch them up oh, and drop them down oh, one more time giving the shoulders a little hunch oh, and then drop them oh all right that feels pretty nice hopefully it feels nice for you so we're going to do just a couple of movements in the rib cage that we maybe have done a little slower i'm going to slide just a little bit forward so i have a little bit of space for my elbows <laughs> We're going to rotate the rib cage in a rhythmic pattern. So I call this the washing machine, but <laughs> if you have a better name, let me know. <laughs> Just back and forth, back and forth. We did a longer twist with the sun salutations. This is just a little rhythmic movement. Okay, one more, and then we're going to go back and forth. So we'll get those little cats and cobras again and I've given myself a little bit more room so if I want to sink a little further back I have room for that oh. all right one more time And find neutral and we're gonna take the legs out nice and wide and we'll fold forward now we're gonna to try to keep the pelvis and the spine mostly aligned 
So see if you can fold forward a, just a little bit, right? Maybe the elbows will rest on the thighs. Some folks will find they can roll forward so far that their hands will touch the floor. So it's up to you as to where you, <laughs> where you decide to put your hands. But now we're just gonna take the inner thighs and bring them out just a little bit. Make sure there's no pain in your knees. And so holding that nice long spine and this little inner thigh stretch, sort of like a squat, a little bit like a forward bend. So the chair gives us kind of slightly different shapes. All right, so we're coming all the way up, spine nice and tall, bring the knees toward each other a bit. And then we're gonna work with the wrist and then we'll do our ankles. So we're gonna spin the hands. Go the other direction. Lace the fingers together, see if you can do kind of a little wave pattern. Go the other direction with your wave pattern. Then we're gonna stop in the name of love. Now I'm gonna pull my thumb back, but I'm not gonna hold on to it. So I'm gonna hold on to just my upper knuckles, draw my hand back, and then stretch the thumb backwards. So this is a good way to kind of stretch out the thumb that's been wrapped around a keyboard or a mouse for a while. Oh, I know it feels pretty intense sometimes. Then we're gonna drop the hand. I put my thumb under here. I'm gonna pull on the top of my hand, bend my elbow a little bit, and then we're gonna stretch the fingers out as big as we can get them and then make a fist and then stretch them out really big and make a fist and stretch them out really big and make a fist. And we're gonna do that one more time with just the big stretch. Good, release that arm, give it a little shimmy. <laughs> and we'll stop in the name of love on the other side. So I'm gonna, again, start, start with the knuckles and then stretch my thumb out and back I'm pushing my arm as straight as I can. That gives me the best stretch on the bottom of my forearm. And then we're gonna drop the hand, pull the hand just a little bit, bend the elbow just slightly so you feel that stretch on the top of your forearm. Then we're gonna stretch the fingers out and curl them in tight and stretch them out and curl them in. I don't know why I'm doing that with my eyes closed. <laughs> Concentrating. <laughs> curl them in, <laughs> stretch them out and curl them in. We're going to do it one more time. Big stretch. Oh, and then release the wrist and give it a little shake. Oh. So hopefully if you've been leaning over your keyboard at all this morning, that little release for both your shoulders and your wrist will feel nice. All right, so we're going to extend the legs and rotate the ankles in circles. I don't know if this is going to be on camera or not, but hopefully <laughs> it's pretty close. So we're rotating the ankles in circles, go the opposite direction. <laughs> and then we're gonna point and flex the feet. So you can kind of stretch over and I kind of curl my toes. And then as I flex my foot back, I stretch the toes apart, okay? So I'm just getting the flexion on either side of the ankle. And also trying to get the toes a little movement. Okay, one more time. All right, now we're gonna take a little, little kind of warrior two shape on this chair. So we're gonna turn sideways. And I sit pretty out, pretty close to the front edge of the chair. I don't know what I did, but <laughs> in any case, <laughs> I'm gonna sit right near the front edge so that this hip has plenty of room to extend. So then I'm gonna extend that leg and you can go straight out front. The warrior two shape is more out to the side, but again, we wanna kinda of honor whatever is happening with the hip socket here. And you may wanna turn the toes more out or more in, right? So you're just gonna kind of adjust the shape so that it doesn't feel like it's doing any harm <laughs> to any of your joints, knee, hip, ankle. All right, so then we're here. We're gonna add a little side angle to this. So I'm gonna rest my elbow on my thighs because I have a little bit, bit of balance. And then I'm gonna lean this pose in the, whatever direction gives me a really lovely stretch through the side here. So depending on where you position your leg, that might look a little different. Mm. Take it 
one more big breath, reaching with my side waist muscles. And then we're gonna come back. We can take that warrior two shape and then a little reverse if it's available. And then we're gonna come back with both legs. So you can slide a little closer to the back of the chair. We're gonna sit up tall, turn toward the chair. So that's the first part is just to notice how does that make my spine feel? And does it feel like it's gonna be all right um, to, for me to just stay right here? The other option would be we can add on a little bit of a lunge. So turning towards the back of the chair, I can extend this outside leg back of it for a twisting lunge. And then I'm gonna come out of the twist and bring that leg all the way back. All right. Now, come into the center. We're not gonna go anywhere yet, but we're gonna pause for a moment and just notice how it felt. Like, did I make good choices? <laughs> yeah. And I also like to let that feeling of the twist kind of soften in the spine before doing the other side. Okay. So I'm turning the opposite way. Again, I'm gonna get really close to the edge of the chair. Extend this leg out for the warrior two. Experiment with what angle my hip should be in so that everything is friendly. And then I'm gonna take my warrior two to a side angle, give it a nice big stretch through the side wall. And I'm pushing my foot down into the floor Sometimes that means I re-angle my foot so I can get a, the best position for that. One more big breath. All right. So then we're gonna bring everything around so we get the hip all the way around, right on? And if you know you liked that lungy twist, then you can stay sort of more centered on the chair so you've got room for this guy. Start with the twist. And then we'll see if we can kind of stretch that leg back. And maybe it's just a twist today. Last breath. All right, I'm gonna bring my leg back. Unwind, come around to the center. Pause for a moment. Notice, like, was that good medicine? <laughs> Should I be more conservative next time? It's good to just check in. So we're gonna do some standing poses with the chair for balance. So we'll start with a downward facing dog. Now I'm gonna use the, sole, the seat of the chair, but you can also turn your chair around and use the back of the chair if you want it to be a little bit higher. So, placing my hands on the seat of the chair, I'm gonna walk back with my feet until I can stretch my back out of that downward dog shape. Kind of pulling back through the hips, <laughs> drawing the shoulder blades onto my back and kind of hugging through my armpits. Chair downward dog is actually <laughs> one of my favorites. It's so nice. Oh, it feels so good. All right, so we'll do a little um, tree pose to start with. So I'm gonna stand on one side of the chair. The leg that's closest to the chair is the one that I'm gonna stand on, put my weight on. And then the other leg is gonna come to the little tree shape. You can bring your foot up higher if you like, but just be mindful of your knee. So for me, the calf muscle is a nice <laughs> sort of rounded surface to press the arch of my foot into. We'll hold steady here. Or if we don't hold steady, we'll catch ourselves with the foot and then we'll come back, right? So you always want to catch yourself with your foot if you can, because that chair will not be there when you're wobbly out in real life. So teaching the body to wobble and catch is really <laughs> keeping that instinct sharp is half the reason we practice balance and maybe the whole reason. Uh, <laughs> so st same leg, right? So we're still going to kind of tucker out this leg. So I'm gonna take a half moon balance. You can use the back of your chair, elevate this leg, stretch out, 
Or if you want, if there's okay for this hip to be bent a little deeper, you can put your hand on the base of the chair, seat of the chair, and extend out. Okay. You've got two points of contact, the foot and the hand. Give it a nice big stretch. Beautiful. And we're gonna come down, bring both feet to the ground, put your hands on the chair, walk back to downward dog. So I'm going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it on the other side. I'm going to move my chair a little bit this way, so i got some room. So again, chair's here for me to get started with, but I don't want to rely on the chair for balance. I try to rely on my own <laughs> body, this part of my brain, all the little muscles in my body that help me stay stable. <laughs> Keep your eyes steady on one spot. Do your best to hold it steady. You might not stay very steady. Again, if you start to wobble, put your foot down to catch. So that's an instinct that, you know, we develop when we're little and we learn to fall. But often as we get older, we lose. So I'm just re recovering that instinct is what we're up to here. It's not about being still. Okay, so we'll come out of the tree turning a little bit towards the chair. Now I turn my foot almost all the way, but some people will find a diagonal is a little better. So you're just gonna experiment. You can start up high, come down a little lower, then navigate around my furniture here. <laughs> Stretch out like a starfish. Whee! Oh, beautiful, big breath. And then we're gonna bring this foot down. We're gonna turn toward the chair walk back, take that downward dog shape. Oh, one more time. Mm. Mm, one more big breath. <laughs> oh, did I mention that I love a chair dog? <laughs> oh, feels nice. All right, so we're going to come back to the chair. Just for a moment, just pause. Sort of notice where we've landed. So we're gonna do a little bit of face yoga today. Now there's a couple reasons to do this. One <laughs> is to um, just keep fluid sort of moving through the um, layers of connective tissue in the face. And there's a lot of them. Our faces are very expressive, of course. So there's a lot of little fine-tuned muscle action. And then the other reason is it kind of helps um, move lymph around in our faces. And in the wintertime, when we're kind of more susceptible to colds and things like that, it's kind of nice to move the lymph around. So we have lymph ducts above the eyebrows, right in this area, and under the cheekbones, right in that area. And so we're gonna do kind of a gentle massage for those. But before we get started with that, we're gonna do some big, it's called lion and lemon is what I call it. So we're gonna do a lion face where you open up your face as big as you can, open your eyes as wide as possible, open your mouth as big as possible, stick your tongue out as far as you can. It looks really dumb, but we're at home in our own houses. So <laughs> then you're gonna squeeze your face in like you just taste a really sour lemon. And then open up to the lion and then the lemon. Now, if you suffer from TMJ, really work on getting the tongue out because one of the reasons mm, for TMJ is actually that the tongue muscle is tight and it won't let the jaw settle appropriately so your muscles overreact to get the teeth to stay in the right place. Squeeze your face in one more time and then we're gonna let that go. And <laughs> so if it's something that you um, think might be beneficial for you for that reason, you can do it for a few minutes, like 30 seconds or a minute um, and 30 seconds or a minute or so. Um, at the big morning and at night, and that might help kind of release some of that pressure in your face. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two fingers, the ring finger and the middle finger, okay? The ring finger is going to be our primary finger. This is a um, is less pushy. We don't have as much muscle action in this ring finger as we do in our index finger. 
So we're gonna use that ring finger to kind of, so we won't, won't be too pr much pressure here. So we're gonna just put a little bit of pressure on the top of like right in between the eyebrows and across the top of the eyebrow. And we're brushing out towards the temple or the ear. So you're gonna go up and then brush across your eyebrows. And it's super light, like we're mm, kind of the same amount of pressure you would use if you were sort of testing out to see if a peach was ripe enough yet. You don't wanna bruise the peach, so it's really gentle. And we'll do two more. I do like anywhere between six and 10 little swipes. Okay, so now right at the temple is a little area where connective tissue from the face kind of comes together. And when, when you get a facelift, they will open this up and pull some of the tissue, right? Because it's sort of pulls some of that. So we're, we're not gonna give ourselves an actual facelift, but kind of like a, a fascial facelift. So we're gonna take those two fingers and we're just gonna make a little circle right at the temple and as soon as you start to circle within a few seconds you can usually start to feel like a little bit more resistance in the tissue so the fascia that lives there under the skin is going to start to respond and so just for about 30 more seconds with that resistance and then we're just going to press down lightly this just stimulates a fluid in the face. So we're gonna kind of hydrate this connective tissue with this little stimulation here. And it might, sometimes I can feel like my eyebrow gets a little brighter, a little bit of the kind of puffiness under my eyes dissipates. Sometimes, <laughs> depends on whether I've gotten enough sleep. All right, so now we're gonna do this lymphatic brushing up under the edge of the cheekbone. And again, we're not gonna be too pushy. So we're gonna use that light ring finger and just go under the cheekbone and up again, right up to the ear. And sometimes I'll do like a little massage where I find that sort of slightly sticky area once or twice. Let's do two more little under the cheek swipes. And then we're gonna go right there, right where the cheekbone meets the ear and we're gonna make another little circle. Again, we're just stimulating the connective tissue to sort of gather up, which will make it hydrate itself. And so if there's excess fluid like under our eyes or somewhere else, it'll get kind of pulled in. Then we're gonna press down lightly, just hold it for about 30 seconds. And let go. And sometimes with that one, I can feel like the top of my lip just gently lift. <laughs> I'm not sure it's the same as collagen injections, but it can't hurt. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush down the lymphatic pathway. So the lymph nodes here, there are little pathways here and then it comes straight down kind of in the front of the ear. So we're gonna make a sweeping motion with the fingers, kind of a little downward sweeping motion towards the collarbones. And that's just to encourage the lymph to drain in that direction. And then we're gonna tap right the collarbones. So the big lymphatic ducts under the armpits on top of the collar, under the collarbones here are kind of what we're aiming at. We're trying to get the lymph to move to these bigger places where it gets cleaned out. And then tap right in the center of your breastbone to stimulate your thymus. If it's still working. <laughs> when we're little, we need our thymus. It helps with growth and regulation of things of that nature. But as we get older, it tends to um, kind of fade away. But if it's still there and it's helping out our endocrine system, it can't be bad to stimulate it. So now just for a few moments, just we're gonna take a second to check back in, kind of come back to where we started. So whether you're resting your hands down or palms up or one hand inside the other, just come back to that. Take a moment and just notice sort of overall the impact of your practice this afternoon or whenever you're doing it.
nice big breath. Let go with a sigh. <sighs> and then with that, go into the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me for a little chair yoga. Namaste.